I'm going to teach you the full rhythm guitar curriculum for semester one of an average jazz guitar university program. If you're thinking to yourself, this lesson isn't for you because you don't care about jazz, I'm not a jazz player either, but jazz theory is the underlying premise for a lot of modern music like soul, blues, rock, neo soul. And if you're wondering why you should trust me, here is a brief summary of my story. And trust me, this is not a humble brag. I am not nearly as good as the guitarist on Instagram. In 2010, I was accepted into Berklee College of Music, but I couldn't afford it, so I went to Montclair State University instead. I graduated in 2014 with a degree in music education and an emphasis on jazz guitar. From 2014 to 2016, I attended Florida State University and received a master's of music degree. Then from 2016 to 2021, I attended the Graduate Center in New York City, or I received another master's degree and a PhD in music. And throughout this time, I also taught at multiple universities and I'm currently teaching at a university in New York City right now. Now, throughout this time, I was never a performance major and I haven't taught private guitar instruction at a university, but I have met many university professors, guitar instructors, many, many guitar students, and so I have a good idea of what is being taught in the curriculum at this point. I made a detailed gorgeous ebook to go along with this video and it was very very time consuming but you can get it completely for free by following the link below so go there download the ebook and use it along with this video preface basic jazz tone tips you don't need a specific guitar for jazz there are great players that use humbuckers electrics hybrids nylon strings steel strings single coils humbuckers and everything else you can imagine you also don't need flat wound strings or specifically heavy gauge strings, but you can of course experiment. If you are using an electric guitar, set your amp to a darkish tone. Bass above 5, treble below 5 or at 5. Start with your mids around 5 as well, and if you are unsure, don't deviate too far from there. Select the neck pickup on your guitar and roll your volume down to between 6 and 9. You can roll your bass down a bit, but don't go down too far. That'll take all of your trouble away and then you won't stand out in an ensemble. Use a hardish pick 0.88 or above. You can also use your thumb and or fingers, nails, flesh, or any combination. If you are a rock guitar convert and only have a bridge pickup, dial your volume down to about 7 and tone to around 5. Drop the treble on the amp to 3 or below. And here's proof that even a bridge pickup can provide a workable jazz tone. Lesson 1, Shell Voicings and the Jazz Blues. Our objective for this lesson is to learn to comp a B-flat jazz blues using shell voicings. Shell voicings are seventh chords that only include the three most crucial pitches, the 1, the 3, and the 7. As a result, they teach us that these are the most important intervals for just about any chord. They sound good on the guitar and usually won't get in the way of a melody or solo. And if you're ever in a live situation and you completely freak out, you can always divert back to your shell voicings to save your skin. We're going to apply shell voicings to a jazz blues in the key of B flat. Now we're focusing on jazz blues because blues is a very common progression in many genres of music. We're selecting the key of B flat because it sits well on the guitar and it's also a popular key in jazz. Finally, the jazz blues also gives us a chance to learn most of the shell voicings except for major, which we'll learn in the following lesson. We're not going to focus on the theory of a jazz blues in this lesson, just memorize the form and get used to playing it. Once we've memorized the basic jazz blues form, we're going to practice it by setting a metronome to two and four, and we're also going to tap our foot on two and four. You should practice playing the progression in different positions on the neck using quarter notes. At this point, we really wanna focus on making sure that each quarter note sounds exactly the same and is completely in time with the two and four metronome and our foot tapping on two and four.
once we can do this, play exactly in time again, but now accent 2 and 4. Listen to how the accents change how you want to feel the time. Experiment with chords in different locations. For example, play the jazz blues starting with the B-flat 7 on the low E. Next, try starting with the B-flat 7 with an A string root at fret 13. You should be able to play a jazz blues in any direction starting from any point in any key. If you made it this far in the video, just give me a like below. That will really help me continue to make videos like this one. Lesson 2. Simplifying with shell voicings and the Charleston. Now we're going to learn how to simplify any chord progression in real time using shell voicings. We're also going to learn the basic Charleston rhythm and use it to add intrigue to our playing. You'll want to obtain a copy of the real book. You can buy a physical copy or you can find one for free online or via apps like iReal Pro. We can turn any chord into a shell voicing by ignoring everything except for the chord quality and the root note. For example, this A13 chord, which includes a root 7th, major 3rd, 13th, and 9th, can be reduced to just the root flat 7 and 3rd. When playing with other musicians, it's very helpful to be able to play shell voicings because it gives space for different people to play different things. The Charleston rhythm is fairly simple, but it is essentially timeless. It sounds like this. You can use this basic rhythm at any time in many genres of music to make things a bit more interesting. To start, we'll turn our metronome on 2 and 4 again, and again tap our foot on 2 and 4. We're going to play the jazz blues form again, but now we're going to use the Charleston rhythm. Now that we're comfortable playing the Charleston rhythm, you can try practicing playing the Charleston rhythm and just quarter notes and switching between the two. Now we're going to get to one of my favorite exercises, and to be honest, I did this all the time when I was in high school, and it really helped me develop my rhythm playing. We're going to start by turning to a random page in the real book. Play through the song using the chords provided in this chapter, using four quarter notes per measure. Use the shell voicings provided to simplify the notated chords in real time. Do not stop to correct mistakes as you play. The corrections will come as you become better at the exercise. After you play the song once or twice, move on to a new song. Remember, this is not a song learning exercise. We are focusing on being able to find simplified chords on the guitar very quickly. As you get better at this exercise, add the Charleston rhythm. Also try switching between the quarter notes and the Charleston. Increase the tempo as you improve. A good goal is to aim for 200 beats per minute. Now 200 BPM may seem like a very high standard, but I promise you, as you get used to doing this, you'll progress fairly quickly. You can get a lot of variety in tone from switching from your pick to your fingers or thumb. Um, here's an example of a few different tones. And um, tell me in the comments below which one you like the most or which one you've been using so far. Lesson 3. Drop 2s, Drop 3s, Extended Charlestons, and Autumn Leaves. In this lesson, we're going to learn root position, drop 2, and drop 3 chords, and we're going to learn how to apply them to Autumn Leaves. We're also going to take our Charleston rhythm and learn how to play it slightly differently to get more rhythmic variation. On the piano, it's very simple to play chords with notes in sequential order. 
the strategy of playing sequential notes on guitar is incredibly difficult and downright impossible in some positions once you get to four notes. As a result, guitarists often rely on drop voicings when we want to play chords that contain four or more notes. To make a drop voicing, we simply take one of the sequential notes and drop it down to octave. In the case of drop two voicings, the second note drops. For drop three, the third note drops. In actuality, you don't really need to focus on this theory. In fact, I almost never think about whether or not a chord I'm playing is a drop two or a drop three and you can forget it once you memorize the chord shapes themselves. Nonetheless, drop voicings are pretty much the standard for all of rhythm guitar, and if you want to play anything interesting like neo soul or jazz, blues, pop, you're going to have to master playing these chords. Now, in the last lesson, I introduced the basic Charleston rhythm. Now we're going to see how we can take that same rhythm and make it a lot more interesting by simply starting it from different places in time. Here's an example of the different Charlestons we can use by displacing the start, a quarter note or a half note or an eighth note. The first exercise is to simply learn Autumn Leaves using the chords I provided in the ebook. Remember that whenever you see E minor 7, you can also play E minor 6. Experiment with using all of the different chord voicings in different positions, uh, use different rhythms like four chord notes to a measure, use different Charleston variations, and then of course you're going to want to practice switching between the different Charleston variations, chord to different places, different quarter note rhythms, and so on. Lesson four, Autumn Leaves and Jazz Blues Revisited and Basic Jazz Theory. In this lesson, we're finally going to tackle the theory behind the jazz blues and autumn leaves. Now, I waited this long in the lesson to cover theory because really you don't need advanced theoretical ideas to play great music, even great jazz music. In fact, many of the greats did not have a very advanced knowledge of music theory. Instead, they focused on what things sounded like and how to play what they heard on the guitar. Nonetheless, I do believe learning a little bit of theory will take you a long way, and the theory behind the jazz blues and autumn leaves in particular is going to account for an incredible amount of information for us. Some would argue that all songs centered in functional harmony are just an expansion of the motion from 1 to 5 and back to 1, which is also true for jazz. You'll also notice that there are other chords that come between the 1 and the 5. Think of those chords as colors used to create more intrigue for the listener. They simply add twists and turns to and from the 1 to 5 movement. In jazz, we often add a 2 chord before the 5 chord, which creates the famous 2-5-1 progression. If you can identify 2-5 movement, you will understand a large chunk of jazz harmony. 2-5-1s come in two different varieties, major and minor. For a major 2-5-1, the chord progression is 1 major 7, 2 minor 7, 5 dominant 7, back to 1 major 7. The minor 2 5 1 includes the 1 minor 7 chord, the 2 minor 7 flat 5 chord, and the 5 dominant 7 chord, oftentimes with a flat 2 extension, and then back to the minor chord. At this point, you are probably wondering why the 2 chord has a flat 5 and why the 5 chord has a flat 2 in a minor 2-5-1. Well, let's continue to keep things simple. The flat 5 of the 2 chord is really the flat 6 of the 1 minor chord. Similarly, the flat 2 of the 5 chord is also the flat 6 of the 1 minor chord. Thus, both the 2 chord and the 5 chord have the same note as an extension, which just adds a bit more color to the minor 2-5-1 sequence and reassures the minor tonality. And as is always the case, we can completely exclude the extensions and just play the 2-5-1 and it will still function fine. There's also something in theory called a tritone substitution. For our purposes, we only need to focus on one aspect of this concept. 
Remember that one to five and back to one is an important aspect of harmonic music. The tritone substitution rule states that we can replace the dominant seven chord with a dominant seven chord a tritone away. For example, one five one is C G seven C. If we apply a tritone substitution, the same progression becomes C C sharp seven back to C. You'll notice we are just replacing the five dominant seven chord with a dominant seven chord one half step away from the C chord. It really is that simple. Let's take it one step further. Remember that a 2-5-1 progression is just an expansion of a 1-5-1 progression. A 2-5-1 is a 1-5-1 with a 2 added for color. As a result, we can apply a tritone substitution to a 2-5-1. C, D minor 7, G7, C becomes C, D minor 7, C sharp 7, C. Now that we have that basic understanding of 2-5-1s major and minor, and also the tritone substitution, we're going to see how we can apply those ideas to the jazz blues and to autumn leaves. So you can see we have autumn leaves here, and autumn leaves is interesting because it's in the key of E minor, but it also goes to the relative major of G major. So I have gold for E minor, blue for G major. So the song starts off with a pickup. This one chord is not usually here, but I just put it here so you know that is the one chord for E minor. After the pickup, the song starts here on A minor seven. And you can see we just have a major two, five, one. So A minor, D seven, G major seven is a two, five, one in the key of G major. And then we go to the four chord of G major again, which is the C major seven. And we know that the four in a major key is usually major. Afterward, we have a minor two, five, one here, going to E major, sorry, E minor. So we have two, five, one to E minor. And then we have a repeat and it goes back up here again to a major two, five, one, to the major four, to a minor two, five, one again. And here we have the second ending, two, five, one. Two, five, one, and E minor. Then we continue. We have another two, five, one, in E minor. And then we go back to the major two, five, one, in G major. And afterward, we go back again to another 2-5. And so here is where things get pretty interesting. We have a minor 2-5, so we would expect the next chord to be an E minor 7, which it is. And you can see that as the minor uh, 1 chord for a 2-5-1. But we can also see this E minor as the start of another major two, five, one to C major seven. So we have a two here, we have a five here, but instead of having the five, we're going to use a tritone substitution, okay? So this would usually be an A dominant seven, but the tritone sub of A dominant seven is an E flat seven. So we go to tritone sub, which is a five. Then we do another two five, D minor seven. And usually the five of D minor seven is G dominant seven. But with the tritone sub, it becomes D flat seven. So this two five, two five is two five with a tritone sub, two, five with a tritone sub, leading to our C major. Very simple. And then from C major, we have our concluding five chord and the ending one chord. So really, this entire song is just two five ones 
in the major key and the minor key of Autumn Leaves. Okay, now we have our jazz blues in the key of B flat. Now, the blues is a little bit more uh, tricky as a theoretical concept because of its evolution. And really this one chord, although it's a dominant chord, it can also be a major chord. We're not going to get too involved with that in this lesson. Let's just keep things simple for now. We have B flat seven as our one chord. Then we have our four chord back to our one chord. Now in a regular blues, this B flat seven would be B flat seven for this entire bar here. But in a jazz blues, you're gonna see we go two, five, one, leading to the four chord. So one, four, one, and then a major two, five, one. F minor seven is the two. B flat dominant seven is the five chord of the four chord, E flat seven. Okay. Now from E flat seven, we move up a half step to E diminished seventh. And this half step motion in relation to the root is actually a tritone. It's not a tritone sub, but it's interesting that we have a tritone here as the movement. And when you look at the actual notes, it's only one note difference. So this, although it seems complicated, isn't really much, okay? We're back to the one chord here. And then usually from the one chord, we go right to the six, and then we go to a two, and a five, and a one, back to the one chord. So one, usually this uh, G7 is the six, two, five, one. But this six, in actuality, is functioning as a minor two, five, one. So if we imagine that the C minor 7 here is the 1 chord, right? Then we would have a D minor 7 flat 5 to a G dominant 7 flat 9 to 5 to a C minor, minor 2, 5, 1. And then this uh, minor chord, which is acting as the 1 chord of the 2, 5, 1, is also acting as the two chord for the major two, five, one, leading us back to the tonic, the one chord. And then we quickly just do another two, five, back to one to end the movement. I really hope this theory section was clear. I know theory can be intimidating for a lot of people, but I did my best to keep things simple while still offering a lot of useful information. Of course, if you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll get to those as well. Lesson five, inversions. Playing chord inversions is a simple way to add more intrigue to your rhythm guitar playing. And it also helps us learn chords all over the fretboard. A chord inversion is simply taking a standard chord and playing a different note in the bass from the chord. Triads have three notes, so there are two different inversions. There's the root position, which we already learned. First inversion has the third in the bass. Second inversion has the fifth in the bass. Seventh chords have four notes and thus four different ways they can be played. We already learned the root position. First inversion has the third in the bass. Second inversion has the fifth in the bass. And third inversion has the seventh in the bass. Now, when you start to add chord inversions to your playing, you have to consider a lot more things. Is there a bass player? And if so, what is he or she playing? Is there another guitar player or another piano player? And what the rhythms and chords are they playing? For now, we're going to keep things very simple and we're just going to use chord inversions to add a bit of movement to our playing. Furthermore, we're only going to play inversions using the E string, the D string, and the G string. Now, if you want a separate lesson on including inversions to add more harmonic variety, leave a comment below requesting it. If it gets enough likes or upvotes, I'll make that video as well. The first exercise is to just practice playing the inversions. Be sure to memorize the different overlapping possibilities as explained in the ebook. Use the chords and inversions below to play through autumn leaves. Start with four quarter notes per beat and two different chords per bar. 
Try not to jump to new group position chords if they are far away. In other words, try to move to the closest inversion. Continue to exercise by playing one Charleston per measure with two different chords for each of the notes in the rhythm. Then experiment with different Charleston rhythms and different inversions throughout the fretboard. That concludes this lesson on year one or semester one of jazz rhythm guitar study at a major university. Of course, this is not intended to be the definitive guide to what it is to study jazz rhythm guitar at a university. And if you hope to get into a prestigious university like Berklee College of Music or NYU, you'll need to know all of this information just to get in for the most part. That being said, no matter what university you go to across the US, by the end of the first semester or by the end of the first year, you will have learned and you should have mastered all of this information. So if you would like a part two where I talk about semester two or year two, please request it in the comments below and I'll do my best to get to it. And of course, if you made it to this ending, I'm sure you found this helpful. So don't forget to give me a like. I'll talk to you soon.